Welcome to the Colby Cast, episode 209. Thank you for joining us. Today, Bonnie and I are joined by three Colby students. Jacob, Gabriel, and James share their experiences of utilizing Colby Academy as they homeschool in Canada. We're so pleased that they could join us to talk about what life is like balancing the rigors of Colby and preparing for college while also fully participating in their parish and community. We hope that you'll enjoy the show. Hi there, I'm Bonnie, Colby homeschooling mom of four lads and lasses, liturgical musician, popcorn and podcast fanatic. And this is Stephen, homeschooling father of five and chief homeschooling officer for Colby Academy. Stephen, how are you? Doing, I think I always say I'm doing well, and I, I pretty much always am. It's a Good. Friday afternoon, so that's 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 a nice addition to uh, the week, though. Indeed, yes. Well, that's that's a blessing. That's great. I'm glad that I'm glad that you were able to respond that way. That's great. And yes, <laughs> Friday afternoon, and a nice way to spend a Friday afternoon is visiting with some Colby students. We have three brothers here with us: Jacob, Gabriel, and James. Hi, guys. Welcome to the Colby Cast. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Um, we're so excited. Yeah, it's 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 a super special opportunity for us. I'm glad it's working out to visit with you guys. I've been looking forward to it and want to hear from you guys. I'll I will keep my uh, remarks to a minimum here and give you more time to talk. So let's start with you guys. Each introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about each of you. Jacob, let's start with you. Okay, so I'm Jacob. I'm in 12th grade, which means last year at Colby. Um, I'm 17 years old. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely been an exciting time at Colby and I, I'm super sad to be, to be uh, departing after this year. It's, it's just something it's hard to wrap my head around. Uh, it's been really my life for the last six years. Yeah, I've been in Colby for six years now, I think, uh, which it, it, it's definitely been a huge blessing in my life. Good. Good deal. Good deal. And what are some of your interests when you're not doing school? There, are, there are um, a lot in far and, and uh, they differ quite a bit. But I, I enjoy uh, math and sciences, um, literature and English outside of school. Obviously, those things um, like uh, reading uh, for literature, like poetry and uh, uh, other novels and short stories. I also enjoy uh, logic and debate, which is. Uh, uh, relates to what what I hope to go into next year in university, hopefully. Um, I also enjoy drama, including costume making and acting. In fact, I'm doing a Julius Caesar play with our homeschool co-op right now, and that's definitely been a super fun opportunity for me. Um, I enjoy sports like ice hockey, ball hockey, ultimate frisbee, skiing, parkour, lots of other stuff too. So. Yeah, th those are probably my my main interests. What's your role in Julius Caesar? Mark Antony, thank you for asking. Oh, yeah. Goodness. yeah, that great speech. You've got one of the great <laughs> speeches of all time there. I don't know. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. Friends, Romans, countrymen. <laughs> it's great. What does a typical school day look like for you? Oh, so they will vary a lot. I think partially because we're my family is pretty involved in our parish life. So we, there are days where we'll go to morning mass, which will drastically differ the beginning of the day for our, our family and um, for me too. So I think on days where we don't have mass, it will be basically um, wake up, we'll do morning prayer because um, uh, if we don't do mass, we do morning prayer. Uh, then we will have breakfast. Uh, and I will go downstairs and uh, proceed going from class to class and doing homework in between. Um, uh, sometimes a break for lunch or going outside um, as the afternoon approaches, um, which is definitely a blessing of Colby and homeschooling. It's that ability to, to take breaks when it, it's um, beneficial for the student um, rather than just having a set time. Um, and uh, yeah, so just going through classes there, if there's a lab or something like that, I'll, I'll take some time, uh, dedicate maybe a, an hour or two to that, or, or if there's a paper or an exam that I need to study for, 
Uh, and then as the evening approaches, I'll try to quiet down my schedule and, and prepare for the evening, which uh, typically means just finishing up classes. If there's a National Honor Society meeting, I'll do that. And then uh, we'll, then we all have dinner together, um, which is lovely. And then we, we have nighttime prayer after that, which usually is the rosary, but on special feasts, it can, it can vary. Uh, and then after that, I'll do more homework usually. Uh, sometimes I'll read if, if I don't have <laughs> homework, which is not very often during this 12th grade. Uh, yeah, and then I'll, sometimes I'll work out and, or do a weight training program, which we go to a local university gym for that. And uh, yeah, and then that's that's the end of that day. Majority of your classes in the online format, or do you have a kind of a mixture of homeschool and online? I started out like my brother James here taking part time online. So that meant I was taking some homeschool courses and some online Colby courses. But um, since the beginning of high school, I've been full time online. So that, that that's also this year, though, I will add I um, have taken a couple AP courses with Pennsylvania Homeschoolers, which is another online program, um, mostly because those are the courses that Colby was not offering. So it w I couldn't find them on on Colby and also because Pennsylvania Homeschoolers has done a great job for me the past couple of years. Yeah. That's good to hear. I've, I've heard about them. I was looking into, into that at, at one point, and I'm glad to hear you've had a good experience with that. Yeah. All right. I was going to make a joke about how like, oh, you know, it's just a day. It's, it's a quite <laughs> densely packed day with a, well, a lot of good stuff going on there. Okay. Gabriel, tell us about you. Let's hear about what you're interested in and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm Gabriel. I'm the second oldest of eight brothers in our family. Um, no girls. And um, we live in Canada. And I am full time online Colby. And I've been full time online for two years. And I've been in Colby um, for four years. In my interests, I've been especially focused on the um, maths and sciences, especially biology, um, which I'm looking into university for um, biology and medicine. And um, other interests I have are uh, ball hockey and ice hockey. And I also um, do ultimate frisbee in the summer. And I also um, spend a lot of my time working on my um, saltwater aquarium. Mm. Um, that's always a very interesting hobby for me. And then I also um, draw a lot. So I do mostly comicking and cartooning. Sometimes I do painting too. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Neat, neat. So what does a typical school day look like for you? Um, so it's a lot like um, Jacob's because I also have the six online courses. Um, sometimes um, in the like mid morning, our cousins will also come over. Um, they also do Colby. So um, we usually do art classes with them or music in the um, Bandus Maximus. Um, so yeah, they sometimes come over um, in the mornings and then um, after dinner, yeah, we do the weight training program usually. Sometimes also we'll just work out um, in a exercise room that we have in our house too. So. Okay. Does some of your art appear in the Colby newsletter or any other places? Um, I did once have um, one picture, I believe it was of St. Maximilian Colby, like three years ago that appeared in the newsletter. Very cool. Um, also, interestingly, this Christmas, um, my parents got me a um, comic book of how to draw comics like Stan Lee, which is used in some college programs. So I've been reading that book um, to try to expand my knowledge of um, making comics. And um, also expanding on my uh, interests and hobbies. I'm also involved in the Julius Caesar play, and I have the role of 
through this in the play. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, you guys have rehearsal time at rehearsal and then probably at home as well? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that's a benefit of having so many siblings is you can basically orchestrate <laughs> any play or something like that but when necessary. <laughs> that's very handy. Yep. All right. And James, tell us about you. Okay. So I am 13 years old in grade eight. Um, three out of eight boys, uh, part-time online, and some of my uh, favorite um, hobbies to do are sewing, building, um, woodworking, pretty much anything mechanical, um, like science projects um, that I have been working on in my um, introduction to physical science and chemistry class on Colby. Very cool. Uh, what do you like to sew? That's interesting. Um, I uh, sew costumes mainly. Yeah. Um, recently, I sewed a uh, military costume that, yeah. Wow, that's pretty involved. There's a lot of structural elements to that sort of yeah. to a costume like that, right? Okay. Yeah. That's very impressive. And all, all of your interests sound very cool too. You're woodworking and what's the latest thing you've made woodworking? Um, the latest thing I've made with woodworking would probably be, I think I whittled like a uh, little bird uh, statue for my mother once a few months ago. I'm sure she loved that. James is really the craftsman of the family. Yeah. So he's very he's cool. Very cool. Uh, each of you guys have multi talented in so many ways. All right, James, what's the school day look like for you? Um, very similar to Jacob and Gabriel's. Um, but one, because I am not fully online, I have um, a bit more free time. And I usually spend that in a um, around an hour outside playing with my brothers, yeah. um, usually hockey or something like that. Sounds good. So you guys who are all online and even James, do you, do you have, you go back to back to back with your classes or do they kind of spread apart where you have some kind of up and down change of scenery time? There are uh, days that have more classes, like my Wednesday, I have classes back to back for most of the day. So the other days with, which have less class time, I usually spend those days doing more homework to submit before the classes. Okay. Yeah, there, there is the, that is a uh, very relevant problem, though, because it, it, it was originally uh, uh, something that we considered because we would we do have classes at the same time, which which can be difficult. As in, you can't have two people going on mic in the same room, or else you get uh, a lot of confusion and laughter in the chat box. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so <laughs> there has been moments of uh, <laughs> enjoyment of that, definitely because uh, I can think of a couple of times when one of us was leading prayer for a class and then the other person had to go on mic for something else and there was uh, chaos in the background. But uh, most of the time, uh, one of us goes on mic and the others are muted. So that, that solves the issue most of the time. <laughs> I bet there are some other families who can relate. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, <laughs> yeah for sure. Sounds like you all have a shared school room then. Did you all, is that? Yes, we okay. Yeah, we do. Yeah, okay. yeah we, we have a... Uh, it's, uh, a, a, it's a nice size room in the basement uh, that we're, we're actually in right now, uh, and it's it's nice and enclosed from the from the rest of the house so that we don't get too much background noise from anything happening outside. Um, yeah, so it, it's quite functional. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. I think people are always curious to hear, like, how do you? What's your setup like? What's your yeah. Setup yeah. Look like? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whenever yeah, I hear back to back to back classes, I'm always thinking about watching my kids like come down to my my desk is down by our kitchen, so they're they're like coming down to stash a bunch of snacks or take snacks up with them to to their. It's like oh, I've got back to back classes. I'll have a chance to eat in between, but yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. marathon. Yeah, 
It also is nice having uh, siblings because there's lunch deliveries, which are, yeah. are, oh, are very nice. helpful. Then you don't need to go upstairs very if they're nice. in back to back classes. So, yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like quite a service yes yeah write it down as a corporal work of mercy or something oh yes very true <laughs> love that that's great <laughs> well when we were making plans to to uh, collaborate together on this episode you guys had some great ideas for what you wanted to visit about and those kind of all center around the experience of being as you describe yourselves colby kids so um let's start with that first point that you suggested and that would be time management what what were your thoughts there um, so for time management, um, at least in our family, for each person, it's different. Um, but I find what works for me is what I've always done, especially starting like when I was part time online in Colby and I had two courses and then the next year, four courses is I always try to um, start and complete the assignments right after they're posted. Um, I find that sort of stops it from snowballing. And um, of course this year, it sometimes like gets a little difficult with um, the six um, full-time courses, but I try to keep up with that as much as possible. And I found it especially helpful with um, giving extra free time on nights and weekends to spend with my family. And then also for major assignments, especially papers, um, the rule in our house is you always try to start them one week ahead so that you can take time away from them, um, which helps you sort of um, like reset and think about new ideas for the paper so that it's ready by the end um, and edited. Oh, I like that, Gabriel. That You said that's a like a house rule, family, a family approach to that. Is that how it's always been? Did, how do you what are your memories of how that came to be? Um, yeah, so at least for me, when I first started, I remember my first paper ever, I like brought, I, um, literally just started it like two days ahead and it really didn't work out. Um, I find it a lot easier because when you start two days, um, or one day or whatever, um, number of days ahead, it, um, sort of gives a lot of stress and also um i find that it helps taking time away from it so i usually go over what i write the paper um usually a paragraph then like a 20 minute break or something then another paragraph and so on and i find that i usually read over the part that i've just written and then begin a new part so that i can sort of connect the different paragraphs and it sort of gives you a new like mindset um, into your paper each time. It's a great approach to it. And I would imagine there's a sense of accomplishment if you go ahead and start it that far out to be like, yeah, I've already started this. I've got this going. And you have that. That is part of the uh, motivation to keep going. And, and you have some momentum going. I would think that would. Yeah, work. definitely. Yeah. It also kind of gives you some more breathing room. Okay. So then. How do you keep track of your assignments and what's coming up and, and all your activities like your play practices and so forth? Um, so for me, I started out with a planner and it was definitely helpful, but I found that for some reason, the planner didn't work for me. I was a very odd student when it came to time management, not at all like my brother Gabriel, who is very good with that. I have a very awkward policy of doing time management. Oddly enough, it works, but it, it's not conventional to say the least. Okay. Uh, so when I started out, um, I really struggled with it. Uh, I think it was as much of a learning curve getting to do time management as the material was itself. Um, so the trick for me was to take really good notes and succinct notes because I like to keep up with studying rather than have to um, organize my day. I'm not very good at organizing my day. I find that things just come up. Like I'll, I'll get that notification that someone has requested. For example, I, I do um, appointment-based tutoring scheduling for the National Honor Society for Colby Academy. So maybe something will come up with that and I'm gonna have to take like half an hour to do that. That would just have ruined my schedule in seventh grade. But 
I, I kind of build around these uh, <laughs> unexpected catastrophes, I could call them, <laughs> um, and, and just kind of brave that by taking good notes. And if I take good notes, I found that I could cut down on the amount of time I had to review stuff, as in I can just, if I forget one thing from my class, I can just go back and check that in my notes. So that definitely um, helped me a lot. And I think, yeah, unlike Gabriel, I, I had, I, I'm not as good at recording my, my assignments. I typically do it in my head, which has, which has been uh, not such a positive experience at times, but uh, eventually I, I, I think I figured out that that's, that's really the, the best option for me as a student. Okay. Fair. Jacob, it sounds like you're making it work. What about you, James? When we say time management, what, that, what do you think of then? Um, so for my time management, I found um, I usually use a digital planner and write down every assignment or something that I need to do. And when I complete it, I check it off. Um, and it kind of gives me a sense of accomplishment. Um, yeah, and I usually do my, the majority of my assignments in the morning, which works best for me, um, to try to get as much free time in the afternoon, as I said, to, uh, play with my brothers outside, just because I find getting like the fresh air every day really helps, really helps me, uh, work and yeah accomplish my assignments that's impressive that you recognize that you kind of work better in the morning on your schoolwork that's a better time for you to do that yeah okay the next point you gave us was prepping for graduation jacob this is this is like imminent for you your graduation is right upon us when this episode comes out yeah so tell me what you had in mind there yeah so i think um the first thing that I would bring up is that I am, as a Canadian, my process for prepping for graduation is a little bit different than it would be for a standard American Colby student, as in I had to take a lot of extra courses that would not be typically required for the Colby diploma. So that's led to a kind of um, interesting experience definitely over the last four years. Um, my mother wisely started um, us out with well, each of us out, but um, me first with uh, only a couple courses at Colby so that we could get used to it. And then the next year, so eighth grade before high school, we take um, a bunch of high school courses. I believe it's three standard three degree? high yeah, school courses, three. one yeah. grade eight. So we take usually one grade eight course and three high school courses because otherwise we can't get in the course requirements for applying to a, an American, uh, sorry, a Canadian university with a U.S. diploma. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so that, that's definitely been a blessing for us because I know I would never have gotten in all my courses if I hadn't done those three that year in grade eight. So that and then um, it also depends upon the program, obviously. So James and I are pursuing a more uh, math and science um, end point and Gabriel's going more for um, biology and maths and science uh, requires a lot of AP courses. So that would mean AP chemistry, AP physics one and two, AP calculus. And then I've chosen this year to just take AP computer science as a side, just so that I'm more prepared for university next year. So um, obviously that that's all very um pressing to get done before graduation. And it's, it's been kind of like a race to get it, get it all complete along with the application process for the universities, which is a whole other thing. Um, yeah. yeah. Before graduation comes. It sounds like you had your eye on that. You and your mom had your eyes on that pretty far in advance. It wasn't a surprise to you coming into your last year of school that had to help, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. It was, definitely was uh, paramount to to my uh, to my high school planning to know what I was doing before even eighth grade because um, just getting in all those course requirements was was 
um, necessary to get into into a um, university for one of those courses. Yeah. Okay. So that's already in place for Gabriel and James as well. It sounds like you guys have a mapped out quite a bit. And so Gabriel, what's it looking like for you at this point? Yeah. So um, for each of us, um, we start mapping our grade, our courses in eighth grade, as Jacob already said. And um, for me, it's been more focused on um, bio. For example, instead of the AP physics like Jacob's doing, I'm doing AP biology um, because I'm hoping to get into medicine. And I'm also doing the honors physics instead of AP um, because it's recommended for um, Canadian universities to have a um, physics course in grade 12. Um, so um, I mix, I'm doing more maths and sciences courses rather than the um, liberal arts, although um, I also enjoy those courses too. But in um, the university, they want more um, concentrated courses depending on um, what area you want to get into. Okay. Yeah. I think it's, it's worth adding too that it's been kind of like a balancing act for all of us because there are the requirements of the universities who tend to favor math science courses. And then there's the um, requirements of the Colby diploma, which tend to um, favor um, liberal arts uh, courses, um, which I think have definitely been a blessing of improving um, just speaking uh, and and writing, especially writing, I think, and just gen all around just general knowledge, I think, uh, ha has been super helpful in even in the, the math and science courses. So but it, it certainly has been a balancing act. And I, I would add that as a as a warning to any students who would be uh, taking uh, math and science university course, especially any Canadians doing a going into a Canadian university with a US diploma that you do have to be prepared to do that balancing act between those two types of courses. Really interesting. I just wasn't aware that um, it sounds like in, Can in some of the Canadian universities that you have to basically kind of decide before you you get there what you're going to be doing where here in, in the States, it's kind of go there and make up your mind pretty quickly, but maybe not exactly. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, definitely something if we had not considered earlier, I would be in uh, trouble this year. <laughs> Decide pretty early. James, it sounds like you're already kind of thinking about it. It's probably not like top of their list of things to tend to, but do you have anything you want to add to this part of the conversation? Um, yeah, so I will probably um, be... I will probably be taking the a similar path that Jacob is taking because in university I will hopefully um, take mechanical engineering, which um, seems quite interesting to me because I do a lot of that already. I was expecting that as soon as you were saying your your path there with all of your hands on activities, it's going to be like engineering. You got to got to get in there, make something, you know. Okay. And so then it is a very short step for you, Jacob, on your university applications. I think when we were planning this, you had just wrapped them up. So what does that then look like when it comes time to do those? And, and what's that been like for you? Yeah. So that's definitely, as a, again, as a Canadian student, uh, sorry, a American student applying to Canadian universities, it's been a little bit different. It's been a kind of unique experience as in uh there's um there's very few students who do who live in canada take a take american diploma courses and then apply to a canadian university but it, at the same time i will add that it has been a huge blessing and relief to see how much the universities credit colby's diploma like they they really um, ex they really accepted it and and thought very highly of the rigors of the Colby diploma. So applying was a long and drawn out issue, especially since uh, I was applying to multiple universities in the Toronto area. Um, 
and it consisted of a lot of uh, subjects, obviously, uh, writing those down, extracurriculars, and um, interview comp components. Um, I think some uh, things I would emphasize is um, that keeping a list of extracurricular activities, including those I did at Colby, like, for example, um, organizing uh, events, like I, I know we have the CARES volunteer program now at Colby that I was part of the founding members. Um, events like that, just writing them down. It's amazing how, how <laughs> fragile the human memory is, just how many things I, I, I realized that I, I've gotten over time and had to write down. Um, so just keeping a list of that, that's another thing I would advise um, students who plan to go into postgraduate programs is just keeping a spreadsheet of just all the all the jobs, all the extracurriculars, all the courses, even like all, all that all that information just nice and compiled. Yeah. Okay. You keep a script a spreadsheet. Okay. I was gonna ask. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. And then um I would also say having the academic advisor at Colby has been super helpful. Um, she's always been um, available and uh, just delightful to interact with, just like always willing to, to give transcripts or any, any other or acquiesce to any other requests that I make. So that, that's been a blessing. And also, um, I have had to, as I've mentioned, there's a lot of AP and SAT requirements for um, uh, Canadian uh, US diplomas going into Canadian universities. So I've had to take a lot of AP courses, which um, it's been a blessing that there a lot of them are were offered at Colby Academy um, and were uh, amazing experiences for me. And I'm, I'm actually taking a few right now. So um, the amazing experiences are are <laughs> present. <laughs> good, good. And um, also the SAT, um, just taking that. I, I took it twice, not because um, necessarily because I, I got a a bad grade on the first one, but but simply because um, it, it was available to take twice. And and uh, in the end, I did prefer my second score. So for any students who would be applying and uh, taking the SAT, just know that that's, that's a good option. Taking it in 11th and 12th grade is, is uh, it's completely viable and uh, I would highly advise it. Okay. Yeah, even, even if you've taken like a practice test or you've done all of that stuff, it's just different going in and actually doing, doing it. So knowing exactly what you're getting into that second time just makes it a lot calmer, yeah. I guess. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Gabriel and James, what's this been like for you watching Jacob prepare for graduation and on the, all this university stuff? What's that been like for you guys? Well, um, for me, it's definitely been like a um, advantage because um, it's uh, sort of I can map out like and see what I'll need to do when the time comes in two years. And um, it's not such of a surprise. Of course, it is different in Canada with the um, uh, sciences. Um, Jacob's going for um, the engineering. But if you're going into medicine, they focus more on grades um, rather than the extracurriculars. It's still helpful to have those mapped out, like Jacob said, on a spreadsheet. Um, but it's definitely more grades focused. But yeah, it's definitely been very helpful seeing all the different steps and interviews and um, uh, parts that you need to do during the application. Okay. What about you, James? What do you think? Um, I really haven't gone into it that much. Yeah. I am just, um, after seeing Jacob last year and this year, um, preparing, like taking few hours a day to uh complete his university application i'm just trying to like prepare myself mentally for this <laughs> yeah. massive obstacle <laughs> in my future it's like it's its own course its own activity yeah in the mix of everything else yeah uh, they, it does take a quite a uh 
allotment of time. Definitely something mm -hmm. to consider. <laughs> so now that those are submitted, do you do you feel like you got a bunch of time back or is it on to the next thing of well now now this is taking up the time that that was? For sure, yeah. I I definitely feel like I have more time now. It was it definitely was a grueling experience because it was just it would basically I did because I did early application. I did everything um, in one month, um, and and it was it was it was a lot. I, it was a lot of uh, writing and uh, interviewing, and and just overall just considering, you know, what 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 do I have to to uh, to present to this university? And and it, it took a lot of time. I I, I will admit that. Uh, it forced me to focus on my my Colby time management, which was probably a blessing long term. And and in the end, I, I think it, it helped me overall. Next level. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. All right. And then you all are pretty involved as you've been describing your various activities and your and the play performance that you're preparing for. You're pretty involved in your school and community. But tell us a bit about that. So both uh jacob and i of course are in the nhs i've i'm a new inductee this year uh, jacob was part of the founding group um and that definitely has been um a big part of the involvement in colby and um when we first started out we were both in the creative writing club too um led by mrs novak a past teacher um and then also, in general, participation during classes and in discussion boards and um, in your courses has been very helpful. I think that's just a very important part of creating like an online community because it's very easy to get drawn into the um, uh, like alienation of it, which can easily happen. But I find that's a very important part with um, an online school is to get involved and participate in your courses. That way you can create more of a community and relationships with both your teachers and students, which um, builds on to the fact like that we're very excited to be able to meet some of our teachers and um, other students at the graduation. So then that's on the school side and then outside extracurricular or community wise, parish wise, um, other community things. What about that side? Yeah. So, um, we, we help at, um, a ice hockey league. Um, we, we help, I, Gabriel and I assistant coach, and we help with the drills at the beginning of games. Uh, our, our dad runs a, uh, ball hockey league in the, in each fall. So we, we, participate in a system with that. Um, we are involved in a lot of sports. We, in the past, we've done an ultimate Frisbee league, um, as I said, ice hockey and just playing sports with, with friends and, and, uh, other acquaintances. Um, and, uh, obviously as I've mentioned and you brought up, um, parish involvement has been a lot of our, uh, it's been a huge blessing in our academic life, just being able to, uh, go to mass. I think we go three times a week is our normal, our normal amount. That's not including weekends, obviously. Um, but we, we alter serve at our parish and we, and Gabriel and I are lectors as well. And I'm a minister of communion. So we're, we're very involved with that. And, uh, um, yeah, it, it's been a blessing in our lives. Is your parish, do you have, are there other homeschoolers there that you all see regularly? No, not really. Um, it, it's we're the <laughs> we're the uh, odd family in the parish, walking in with uh, uh, too many children. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, it's it, it's it's nice and quiet. It's usually very quiet on the the weekday mornings, and and yeah, we're we're more connected to other Colby students through our homeschooling co-op. Okay. Um, um, obviously, uh, as Gabriel mentioned. Our cousins, our cousins do um, Colby as well. So we meet with them often during the week, usually after mass. Um, and um, I was originally introduced to Colby actually with uh, a homeschooling family that we 
we knew. Um, so that, that led to me being at Goldie, which is definitely, yeah. Sounds like it works well for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it, it's, it's been a blessing. James, is there more you want to say about this section about your school and community involvement? Yeah. So, um, as my brother said, we have a few jobs at our parish. Um, and last summer, Gabriel and I had a job of gardening at our par- in our parish's gardens, as well as altar serving, um, which all of my brothers do as well. Um, and Jacob, Gabriel, me, and a- another brother that we have also won a altar serving award from the Bishop of Toronto, um, which was exciting. Yeah. And as well as some, we did some, uh, we do some other sports. Um, I do swimming lessons. Um, We do hockey, as they said, on Friday nights. And yeah, a few other sports as well. I I should have asked this right away, but is ball hockey dude, like uh, we did street hockey with a ball hockey sticks? Do you give the like the roller blades is or is it just on foot? It's usually on foot. We have done uh, uh, it on roller blades, um, but uh, I think the difference between street hockey and ball hockey is mostly that ball hockey is done on a smooth surface, whereas street hockey is done on a rough surface. Small difference, but yeah. okay. All right. So, what are some of your most memorable experiences y'all have had as Colby students, they can be happy or cautionary or a mix of both or what stands out in your mind when you think about your Colby time? Yeah, I think uh, a few cautionary um, things are, so our mother always taught us that you in classes and online classes at Colby, Um, Whenever you chat in the chat box while the teacher is speaking, it's like speaking over the teacher in a brick and mortar school, which is obviously not very polite to do. Um, On the brighter side, um, in Latin class with Dr. A, um, he sometimes reads his book, When the Earth Was Flat, which always... um, it's very funny and um i always i always share the recording with my family which we always laugh very hard to because yeah (laughs) nice you get a reading from the author yeah (laughs) like exclusive yeah Yeah, that's great yeah that book is great we've we've he's told us about the book on the colby cast so we'll we'll put a link in our show notes too (laughs) <laughs> to that episode we're talking about that book it's come up a few times but we've got one mostly on it so anyhow okay yeah yeah whenever you, it's mentioned i'm always thinking he's probably reading about shooting him <laughs> and his brother shooting each other with bb guns yeah. in there, so. <laughs> boy does he read it in latin <laughs> <laughs> not yet that'd be a bonus but yeah. we'll have you translate it okay that'll be the next <laughs> thing <laughs> okay what about you, Gabriel or Jacob? Any standout memories? Um, so for me, um, uh, the same um, cautionary thing with James, uh, um, especially, I would say um, more advice is build a relationship with your teachers because it's definitely an advantage to have and it's a great gift, gift to have um, teachers who can connect on both an academic and a um, spiritual level with you. And that's one of the, another advantage of Colby is that um, it has a great involvement in faith life. And um, my experiences of that have definitely um, been very positive. For example, um, each, like each year, I've always had a 8.30 morning class on Wednesday, and that always overlaps with um, morning mass at our parish. And teachers have always been very uh, kind and generous about um, giving me permission to go to morning mass on celebrations such as uh, Ash Wednesday. 
And then um, just recently on Monday, the Feast of the Annunciation, um, that was another time. Um, so that's definitely been a, um, a great experience at Colby. And then um, another favorite moment of mine, uh, which is a reoccurring moment, is uh, Mrs. Power's costumes and her uh, celebration on Pi Day. Um, that's always a um, very humorous occasion in her class. Yes, we enjoy hearing about her costumes and, and seeing what she comes up with. As my cautionary advice, um, just to kind of learn what your um, education style is. So I know for the first couple of years in my classes, I was strongly encouraged by both my teachers and um, others at the school to do handwritten notes. And I, I found throughout those two years, they were just not working for me. Number one, I could not read my own handwriting. And second of all, they just, it, it, it seemed like I, I wasn't, I didn't write down enough from the classes and, and I, what I did write down, I couldn't read. So I found that uh, a different style of notes and um, my teachers have been very kind, specifically Mrs. Powers, I think in endorsing this, this way is um, just getting a, a Word document on my monitor and uh, dragging screenshots from the class slides into it and then writing up whatever the teacher is saying so that I can capture both their slide and what they're saying at the same time, which sometimes has an extra um, gem of information that that is necessary to do well in the class. So I, I just think finding finding one's own place in the in the world of, ed, of the of the school is, is super important. And then I think as my positive experiences, obviously, I've had a lot, so I will not list them all. But um, I think just to, to get involved in school activities um, is, is just so, so important. Um, we, we've entered and, and played in the talent show and Christmas concert a couple of times. And it's been, it's been such a joy to do that. Um, uh, and and we, do, we do it with our cousins as well, with the Bandu Smacks, as Gabriel mentioned, <laughs> our, our band name. And, Good following, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Um, so it's it's just lovely to do those things for the school, just to to make friends and then help the community spirit grow. Just so important. And then um, also, I will mention uh, badges. They they have been uh, very happy memories for us. Um, we've had some teachers who are very creative about their badges. Uh, special shout outs to Mrs. Novak, who unfortunately is no longer at Colby, and um, Mrs. Powers. Uh, there there's just uh, an uncanny sort of motivation that that comes from them and 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 collecting. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, the batches are big. Okay, so you have given us many gems of information along the way. I like that. I like that expression. That term. Can we have to borrow that? Um, do you have any others that you would like to give in the form of suggestions for fellow students or families who are considering homeschooling, or those who are new to Colby, or even just homeschooling in general? Um, I think the first thing to say is don't let things snowball. That's, I think, a common mistake. I know even I've, I've made it a bunch of times. Um, I, I can't speak for Gabriel and James, but um, it's just, it's such a slippery slope as in, if you, if you just take that extra 30 minute break or hour break and decide not to do that assignment, your teacher may post something else in that time period. And then all of a sudden you've got two assignments and you've lost an hour of your time. So um, do the assignment right after it's assigned uh, to avoid unnecessary suffering and, and um, that sort of um, experience. Okay. <laughs> um, I think also for people um, entering Colby as well, uh, gradual onboarding is a super helpful thing. Um, I know my mother has been very wise in that she put us in uh, two courses in seventh grade, uh, two or three, um, then uh, four in eighth grade, and then six in ninth grade. Um, and, and it's been very helpful in that you just get into the school rigor and daily life, and it all of a sudden it becomes much easier to adapt to a larger course load. Um, yeah, and then I, I would also mention um, building concrete relationships, as Gabriel's mentioned, 
um, previously with, with teachers and classmates. Uh, first of all, you may meet them at graduation. And also, it, it's just a wonderful thing to, to know other people because it, it, it's, it really gives you a sort of outlook into the world as in it's, it's a virtual school. So there are, there are students from so many different places and you can learn about all those different places and ways of life. And it's so interesting learning all of that. I agree. And then when you set out into the world, if you find yourself in a new place, chances are good, there will be a Colby family there and you've got built-in support system from the get-go. Love that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So I think Jacob captured it um, pretty well. I would um, say that uh, participation is definitely one of the most important aspects of um, uh, especially uh, online Colby. And um, even with the participation grades gone this year, it just shows like a respect to the teachers and also a respect of the course um, and of the school. Um, and it's a sign of gratitude to um, all who put their time into um, making the school such a um, uh, good place in terms of education and faith life. I'm not surprised, but I'm very heartened and impressed to hear you make that that particular observation that speaks of a great maturity on your part. Yeah, I would just um, I think Jacob and Gabriel covered most of it, but yeah, I would just emphasize the participation because as um, we know from experience, the teachers um, really enjoy when their students participate and show that they're listening. Yeah, the teachers have sent emails thanking us just for our participation. And I think it just makes a big difference um, in the class as well as to the teachers for, yeah. Definitely. Do you, with you still doing uh, some offline, some online, do you have any suggestions for students who who might be maybe there at the beginning of their, uh, like mid-middle school or starting kind of where you are or maybe a year or two behind you? Anything that you would want to say to them? Um. Yeah, I think, so before um, I began um, Colby, as well as the rest of us, we all did um, Saxon math, which um, is it. It's a difficult program, but as we have seen, it really, really helps in Algebra One. Um, it gives you a much bigger understanding. Um, yeah, I think just Saxon math, although it's difficult. It really, really helps in, yeah. Yeah, yeah, as James was saying, obviously I, it's been a while since I, I did uh, non, non-online courses and that, but just, just to be prepared for the courses is, is, is such a, a boon when, when doing Colby, because if you go in with the knowledge and the preparation, things will be so much easier especially if it's your first year and you're getting adjusted to the, 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 um, the uh, live classes, the discussions um, and all that information can sometimes seem a little overwhelming. Just having the knowledge so that you don't need to cling on to everything your teacher says is, is, is so paramount, I think, to, to having a successful first year. Okay, great. Is there anything we haven't talked about yet that you wanted to? Um, I, I don't think so, but uh, yeah, I, I think that's all. But uh, yeah, we're 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 so grateful for this this experience and and uh, talking to you. Um, I think it it really speaks to the uh, to the community spirit and the dignity shown to students at Colby that you would ask us to be here. Oh. The pleasure has been ours visiting with you guys. We had a delightful conversation with your mom that we we speak of it often, how much we enjoyed that. And, and we think of her and the blessings that was to get to meet her. And it's equally true for this time that we've gotten to spend with you and get to know each of you a little bit and wish you great success. And we will be offering many prayers for your family. And, and I hope that you will keep in touch with us. We really appreciate 
all that you've given us today. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you, you thank so you. much. Yeah, we appreciate the prayers. <laughs> Subscribe to the Colby Cast on your favorite podcast app so that you don't miss an episode. And let us know how we're doing by leaving a rating or a review. And as always, feel free to email us at podcast at colby.org. Mary, our mother, pray for us. St. Maximilian Colby, St. Ignatius of Loyola, Holy Saints and Angels, pray for us. Ad maiorem Dei Gloriam.